Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Bleacher coming to you from the Will's Eye Alumni Society newsroom here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I've been asked to uh, say a few words about a new FDA approval uh, of an intraocular lens for cataract surgery. It's always exciting when the FDA seems to be doing its job and looking at and approving new technologies for medicine and in ophthalmology in particular. Sometimes we have a whole raft of new products coming out and sometimes there's been quite a wait. In ophthalmology and particularly in cataract surgery, we've been a bit spoiled over the years and we've had many new products. Just recently, the FDA approved the Abbott Labs AMO Symphony Extended Range of Focus Intraocular Lens for cataract surgery. In cataract surgery, we're taking out the cloudy lens of the eye, that's the cataract, and replacing it with a clear plastic lens. We've been doing that for quite a while and the technology has improved over many years, as have the quality of the replacement lenses that we've been using. We like to use replacement lenses or cataract implants that will not only be clear instead of cloudy, which the cataract was, but also improve on the visual function or the optical function of the eye. So people who are having to depend on glasses, either for distance, for astigmatism correction, or for reading, may not need to use those glasses after cataract surgery. So all of these new lenses, or many of these new lenses that have been coming out that some, some of you may have heard about, are attempting to do just that. We're attempting to recreate the perfect natural lens of the eye that many of us were born with. However, there's nothing perfect yet. It's always a, a, a process. And every uh, new lens is uh, hopefully a step forward uh, reaching that ultimate goal. The AMO Symphony lens is a somewhat newer class of product that endeavors to not only replace the cloudy cataract, but to l allow you to get rid of your glasses for all of the uh, different needs that I just spoke about, for distance or near, for astigmatism, and for reading. Uh, there are a couple of lenses that try to do that currently with uh, some degree of success. They're called multifocal lenses, and they use a concept of diffractive optics to break the light up into two focal points, distance and close. And that can work for many patients. It does require the eye to be quite perfect otherwise optically, no other medical conditions or issues. Uh, and the surgery has to be very perfect as well. There's another class of lenses called the accommodating lens, which purports to change its focus by moving in the eye uh, to give you near and far. That lens also can treat some astigmatism. The current multifocal lenses cannot. The symphony lens uses a variation on diffractive optics, not to create two focal points, but to create one elongated focal point. The advantage of that being that you don't get as many side effects such as glare and halo when you don't have two separate focal points competing for attention. In addition, this lens is said to be very, very good at correcting for chromatic aberration. Now, there are many different abnormalities or irregularities in an optical system, such as the eye, which can cause the vision not to be perfect despite having a perfect uh, surgery. And some of these are different kinds of aberrations of the light path in the eye. Spherical aberration, chromatic aberration. Um, the symphony lens pays particular attention not only to spheric aberration, but to chromatic aberration. So if you decrease the amount of aberrations, you can increase the quality of the image. And that's very important in trying to get a little extra visual function out of your intraocular lens. What's even more revolutionary about this product and this approval from the FDA is the first one of these presbyopia or reading vision correcting intraocular lenses that can also correct for astigmatism. The crystal lens or the true line is an accommodating lens that corrects for astigmatism. This is the first of the diffractive optic uh, correcting lenses that can correct for astigmatism. So a lot of surgeons have been very interested in having a technology like this available and now it seems that we will. I'm told that the lens will not be available for use in the United States until sometime after September. It has been approved in Canada, Latin America, and Europe, and the word on the street and talking to my colleagues is that it's functioning extremely well and uh, they're having a very great success with it. So I'm looking forward to having it available for use here at Wills and in the United States and reporting back with, uh, with our own results once we've uh, gotten our hands on it. Thank you for your attention.